Jordan Hall. What an epic looking lake. Where are we? We're in uh, Staffordshire, Cannock, so not uh, too far off the M6. We're at uh, Kingswood Lakes, so part of the Blackfords ticket. Uh, you get five lakes and this is probably my favourite. Nice. Probably 17 acres, 30 foot deep. Proper wild, yeah. Nice, nice. Well, we're here to do some feeder yeah. fishing. We've got the Cortex rods with us. Uh, one of us is going to be fishing short, one of us is going to be fishing long. Uh, we've already flipped the coin and luckily I'm going to get the bream. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get straight to it. All best. Oh, he's big. <laughs> he's big. <laughs> Very nice. So, yeah, I'm in straight away. I've only been fishing 16 minutes on the timer and I've hooked one. Um, it appears to not be a bream, if I'm honest. It's now going through Jordan's peg. So, yeah. This looks like it's going to be a carp if I get it in, which hopefully if I do, that means I've just won the quid first chuck. So, Mint, we can pack up, can't we, Jordan? Well, not quite, not now you're trashing my swim. Yeah, I'll, I might I'll need to get in that here. bit. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this, uh, this is the ideal, like, you know, time to run through the sort of like, a rod like this, because, because it's quite sort of stiff and strong to get to the distance anyway, it gives you the, uh, the capability to play these size fish out. Um, hang on. I'm gonna need to lean out here. Ooh. Shall I get in carp style? Oh, that'd be class. Yeah, I might get in. Uh, He's in. There we go, this is proper this, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it's just trying to get into the reeds down the edge, folks. Oh no. Oh, it's found a snag. Don't do this to me. I wanted to win that quid. Oh. Oh, it's okay. I thought I'd lost it then. How long the carp has been here, George? Probably two days, still right. spodding. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like I was saying, because you've got the strength down the rod that uh, helps you give the distance, um, playing like, you know, really big fish isn't an issue with these type of rods. Uh, you can get them in. Just lift your rod tip up, George. I've completely ruined his peg now as well. I'm trying to look for it. I need, I need a quid to put towards a new tyre. <laughs> I have had a look, it's a bit of a pancake. Uh, so yeah, this is the, uh, the new Quartix um, rod from Midi, top of the range. Uh, this is, I'm fishing with the 12 footer today, which is the middle of the, uh, the range. There's an 11 foot, a 12 foot and a 13 foot. I chose the 12 foot because I'm fishing at about sort of 50, 60 yards, something like that. So you need, uh, a rod with a bit of backbone to get out there and a bit of length to get, you know, the cast going. It's not so bad with the method feeder, but, you know, I've, uh, I've sort of put two pints of bait in with um, a 40 gram cage feeder. And once that's loaded, you need to give that quite a bit of uh, oomph to get out there. 
This one's angry. How big do you say they go, Jordan? I think the biggest is 30 odd, but there's loads of 20s, 15. Hopefully it's a 30 and I can pack up, eh? <laughs> you'd, you'd be that lucky as well. <laughs> I can see that the appeal of this feeder and carp fishing, you know, you get to wade in the water. Yeah. Cast bit... a load of bait out. <laughs> we'll have to get you some of them proper shots where you're kissing it and looking at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caressing it. Yeah. Have you got some of that antiseptic stuff as well to... I can... I've got some vinegar. Some fish care. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if it's your personal best, there's a bucket of water straight over your head. Well, it's a hot day. Well, I can see it. Oh, How big a, is he? It's a common about a pound, pound and a half. Pound and a half? Pound it's and a half. not that big now, is it? Oh! Oh, oh. <laughs> oh no! It's probably about 15 pound, something like that. No, it's common. Bit gutted about that. Oh. Hmm. Got wet for nothing. Yeah, I know, yeah. Oh, oh well, your quid's safe at the minute. It's <laughs> what we like. Now the peg's ruined. Oh, oh dear. I'm gutted about that. <laughs> That's first blood to you then, Jordan. Yeah, it is only fair after you wrecked me swim. I won't, I won't dwell on that if I lose. Was he on maggots? It was, double red. Weren't quite as big as mine not hooked on maggots though. Are you in again? Yeah, in, in again, yeah. Oh. Beginner's luck, always beginner's See, luck. See, I should be nearly 20 pound ahead now and now I'm <laughs> losing. <laughs> well. He could have netted it for me as well, it was in front of him. I, I could have, I'd mm. have probably tried to knock it off. Yeah. Is that another skimmer? Another skim bob, I think, or a roach, one of the two. You're just going to catch one of them every chuck, aren't you? No, I wouldn't do that to you. You'll be all right, you'll catch a proper one soon. Yeah. I think I've got method envy. Is that a roach? It is a roach, proper Look at roach. That. Oh. oh. Look at that. So which rod are you using, George? Is that the 11? Well, after you uh, won the toss and got to choose and go long distance, I thought, well, I'll fish short. And I did go for the 11, actually, yeah. It's, it's really nice, actually. It's got fantastic casting action on it. Um, and obviously, as you can see, playing fish, that sort of size, it seems to handle them lovely without being too overgunned. How are you getting on with that tip? It's obviously, uh, it behaves a bit differently than normal, being spliced, doesn't it? Yeah, I've gone for the lightest, so I've gone for half ounce, just so I can see all the bites. Obviously, it's flat calm today, there's no toe. And uh, it's beautiful, it magnifies them that much. Because normally on a 12 foot, you, what would you have? An ounce, ounce and a half to start? Yeah. And I think with the half ounce, you'll just see everything. And, yeah, uh, and have, having such a short section of solid, because uh, these, these, these new tips are, are spliced basically with a hollow and then uh, a solid bit of carbon or glass at the top. So yeah. uh, it just tends to exemplify the, 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 the bite slightly because it's like a shorter section of bend, bendy um, carbon, if you like. It's, it seems spot on. Obviously, I've got braid on as well. Yeah. And that magnifies it even more. Well, I saw your bites from here, so it must be working. Yeah, oh, definitely. I just hope mine goes round again. I hope that wasn't my only fish. Well, I hope you don't catch too many of them, else you'll beat the quid. Yeah. <laughs> and being tight, I need that quid. What distance are you casting there, Jordan? It is exactly 30 turns of a 4,000 size reel. So not so too far. Is that the sort of limit for that rod, or do you think you can go further? I think you could easily get another 20 turns on it. 
but then I think you're pushing it and you ain't going to get the accuracy and uh, it looks like you've got one. Well, I lost the first one, so let's <laughs> see if I lose this one as well, shall we? I'm not saying you're on the best peg, but you might be. This one doesn't feel like a £20 carp, though, so... <laughs> a bit gutted about that, actually. It'd be a £6 bream, that will. No, it doesn't feel like that. Feels like one of those perch you warned me about. <laughs> they love it, them perch. Don't worry about me, I'm just swanning about. Oh, oh. It's a little skimmer. It's a wannabe bream. It's not even as big as your roach, that. <laughs> it's a good sign, them feeding. Oh, he, this one was never coming off. That's in there proper, that. So you're obviously fishing, what, 60, 65 metres, Lee? Uh, it's, yeah, it's roughly that. I'd say 60 metres, something like that. So, uh, so I've gone for the 12 foot. 12 foot with uh, which tip have you gone for? Gone for an ounce and a half on this one. Oh, so not too heavy then, really? No, you don't really need a heavy tip because you've got that, that hollow section so far up. The tip doesn't really affect the cast at all. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. can get away with fishing light and obviously you want, a, you, 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 know, you want a nice soft tip so you can read what's going on in the peg if you can, any liners, etc. It helps you decide whether you're going to be refeeding. Definitely. You but think... no, it's, it's getting there fine. It's a bit, bit, probably a bit of a stretch of a 40 gram cage, but once I switch to the method feeder, it, it gets to that, that range comfortably. Yeah. You can easily go another 20 yards, probably 80 yards with oh, this so one. So you definitely ain't maxing out the rod. No, though. not no. with a method feeder. Yeah. So you've got the 12 foot, but you've also brought the 13. Uh, when would you use the 13? I'd probably use the 13. Um, as either a separate baiting up rod for this distance or yeah. you know that that's that would be able to achieve like some real distance out so probably between sort of 60 and 90 yards maybe even 100 if uh, if you're really going for it it's, so a, it's a it's a proper rod proper that. rod but it ain't affected in the action of soft enough to fish for no exactly for yeah yeah they've done a great job with that So that wasn't loaded at all to get to that distance. It's no, nice I got there easy. Got another one here, Jordan. Is this going to be two all? I think so. But uh, it's kind a of a of... good thing I lost that cart, really, and it <laughs> made, made more of a contest. You're giving of me it. a chance. Is that what yeah. you're trying to say? I, I, I still put it down to the end peg. Yeah, I, I agree with you. That's I all agree. right. <laughs> Is it just going to keep going round like this all day? For you, maybe. I might have to work a little bit harder. But, uh... What have we got? Oh, it's another skimmer. Oh, yeah. Feeder fishing's brilliant. <laughs> have I converted you from F1s to Bream? Maybe, yeah. Yeah. It's about the same size as the other. Look at him. Very nice. Pound, pound and a half? Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. Yeah. Not as big as your roach. Well, I was a proper donkey, that. So, Lee, you, you, you're casting quite a distance. Just run me through, like, uh, your technique, where you're lining up with something on the far bank, how you're keeping it so accurate, because you're hitting the clip every time. Yeah, well, the first thing to start off is, is to make sure you've got a decent drop. So you've got, like, probably, what's that, three, four foot? Yeah, something three, like that. four foot, yeah. Um, at extreme distance, you're going to be sort of like, you'd set yourself up like that and aim the, uh, the, the rod butt at, at your far bank marker. It's obvi obviously always important to have a far bank marker that you're aiming for. Yeah. Uh, for this sort of length, um, I'll do the sort of like, the, where you do a little bit of a pendulum, so the feeder's away from you, um, and making sure you swing it towards your far bank marker. Um, and that just keeps everything in a nice straight line towards where you're trying to, uh, to cast to. And you're getting all of your power where you've got this flat section of the rod uh, yeah. for, your, for, your, for your left hand. Like, you get all your casting power from, from, from the hand at the bottom of the rod, if got you it. like. So, uh, yeah, just run you through. You sort of 
keep everything in a tight line, pull it back, pull down firm with the left hand, and you hit the, hit the clip comfortably. So easy when you do it and let the rod actually do the work. Yeah, you've so got to get that rod loaded up and you use the, like a, you know, use the rod's action to, to help you with that cast, you know? How are you getting on with your 30 metre cast? <laughs> well, there's a few fish knocking about, not you as big as one? yours. Is that another one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They ain't as big as yours, so don't worry. Got a bit of a ripple coming on now. Should empty it. It should be good. So how have you started your peg off today, Jordan? Well, I, I've done it a little bit different today. I, I thought I'd try something. I've actually put half a point in. I think you put two points in, didn't you? Yeah, I put two points yeah, in. Yeah, I've put half a point in just to start. Normally, I'd probably just fish it straight away. Normally, there's a lot of small routes you can catch well, before just be, them uh, skimmers. Just be casting regularly. Yeah, I think normally like your lines every eight to twelve minutes bite wise. Yeah. This line I'd probably be leaving three minutes, four minutes. You can catch you, a lot are of bite. Are you bite. waiting three, four minutes, or would you be casting again after a minute and a half to, to begin with to get some bait going through the water? Um, I'd probably be a minute off because there's a lot of hybrids and roach, and they're, they're not always on the bottom. Yeah. Uh, it's good to get some bait going through the water, and you will catch quite a lot on the drop. Uh, so it's, do you vary the length of your hook length to uh, to take advantage of that? Definitely, it's hook length, especially fishing a cage, is massive. You know, um, you can catch a lot of fish on the drop here and catch them quick. Uh, so I tend to start on the longest, normally a metre. Yeah. And then work my way back according, or even go longer, uh, or do some and floating maggots and fish. What it. makes you? Uh, what will make you change the length of hook length? What what signs you're looking for? Uh, obviously, if it's going through on the drop and you can feel, I always put the rod under the water and hold the braid. And you can actually feel the fish sometimes knocking it. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I'll go longer if I'm not connecting with them. Maybe I'm not giving them long enough to take the bait. So you won't, uh, um, obviously, harking back to the commercials, if uh, normally if you deep hook a fish, um, yeah. that's when you make a change with your rig because you're always looking to lip hook them. Is that the same with this or not so much? I think, yeah, definitely. Sometimes you can catch some bream and it's right down. Obviously, they've got a lot of movement, you know, they're coming down onto the feeder, pick up your up bait, and they've got a metre's worth of line to swim about yeah. before they even touch it. But the fish that I've caught have all been smack bang in the bottom lip. Which right the in sign the is perfect then. Yeah, so it's not too long and I'm not too short. I'm getting bites, you know, every couple of minutes, which is good. Um, the only other thing I could do is unclip and go an extra metre past. Yeah. Then fish might just be sitting off all that feed. But likewise, there might not be enough there. Uh, I might have to put a bigger feeder on and really attack it, put lots of worms through. So it's, you can definitely vary it up more on a cage than what you can on a method. Yes. Um, I'm quite restricted of what I'm doing here. So yeah. I'm like, uh, I've put two two pints of bait out, which was ground bait, micros, a few bits of corn and a few uh, casters. Yeah. And then I'm sort of like, I'm just going to sit here for 15, 20 minutes at a time. Yeah, and, it's about and just right. time it on my watch. Oh, I think that's massive having a watch when you you definitely feeder fishing. Maybe not so much on a commercial in the summer because it's quick fishing, isn't it? It's very yeah. quick. But this sort of fishing. But again, with fishing rods different, you've got yours on a rest. Where I'm, I'm fishing different, I've got mine across my leg, so I'm going to be a lot, you know, busy. Oh, I'm waiting for them to hang themselves, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
know, Lee, you, to be fair, you're one for commercial fishing, and I've brought you here with these rods. Do you think the rods can do a bit of everything? Most of my fishing will be done with the 11 foot yeah. uh, on, on, on the commercials, and I think, uh, I think it'll be a brilliant all round tool for a bomb fishing, method feeder fishing. Um, it's, it's definitely and, soft enough for them smaller fish. Yes. And, um, but it has got some backbone eye to cast and also to play them big carp. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had a few carp on that 11 foot and it gets them under control really quickly, especially under your feet. You, yeah. uh, you net them really quickly with it. Um, and then the 12 foot, that'll come in uh, for, for your longer method feeder chucks on places like Hayfield, Boddington's, uh, Barston, etc. Uh, yeah, when, you, when you're doing that sort of 60, 70, 80 yard cast, um, and it's got a great action to play them out, still still soft enough to do it, you know, not be pulling those hooks out under your feet. So Definitely. they've done a great job on the action on these rods. Yeah, they are nice. What I like is that you can have a 13 foot rod, a really soft tip, and fish for skimmers at range, which normally a 13 foot, two ounces would be your first tip. Yeah, you, uh, you're not going to be looking for like delicate bites. You're waiting for them to hook themselves, That's basically, it, yeah. aren't you? But yeah, like you say, with these, you've got the combination of a nice soft tip on it so you can read what's going on, strike at little indications, as well as getting the accuracy and the distance that you need. That's the biggest one for me, is accuracy with them. Mm. They're uh, a bit special. I'm just deciding to top up. Um, I've hooked a, a carp after sort of 15 minutes after putting two pints of bait out there and um, I've got it in my head that it's cleared, cleared the swim out because you know to hook such a, a big fish so quickly after feeding it must have eaten some of the other bait so I've had two skimmers about a pound and a half a piece but I need to uh, I need to get in my head that there's a better bait back out there again so I've had them two skimmers and then no more bites for two casts so I just feel as though that bait's already gone although it's a lot a lot of uh, gear to put in initially I just think uh, a big carp like that would clear that out so quickly that um, yeah it's definitely definitely worth a top up So, um, although I'm fishing a method feeder, I'm topping up the swim with a cage. A uh, cage feeder will release the bait so much quicker than uh, what you would have a method feeder. To get it out there on a method feeder, you need to squeeze it on quite hard, and there's a chance that when you're striking, you know, to, to release the bait, some of it's going to come with the feeder. So, that doesn't happen with a cage, and you and you can get more bait. Um, you can get more bait out there uh, per cast with a bigger cage feeder. What I want to have out there is a nice bed of bait that a few fish come in and settle over the top of. Um, and then I'm just using the method feeder over the top just because of its uh, efficiency of hooking fish, basically. You're getting a few now, George. Yeah, I mean, one or two. Keep swapping up and down and I think you're in front things. of me now, aren't you? No, them bream were massive that you've had. No, they're only small. So I've just topped up because I felt as though there was no bait left in the peg. I've yeah. noticed you haven't. Um, what's your thinking? I think if you're fishing method, you've got to top up because you you can't really do anything, can you? You've got to sit there and wait until it goes round. Where on this short line, it seems to pay to have a run of fish on one line and then simple as just taking two foot off, three foot off. Then fish just seem to back off and off and off. Um, so I ain't really topped up, I've just took probably a metre of line off, put a lot more particles in than ground bait. Yeah. And uh, it seems to be catching a few fish. I think the fish naturally want to be in the middle of the lake. Yeah. And I'm just catching them early fish and working my way out. I think on a day like today as well, they're sat up in the water, aren't they? So a few particles is probably yeah. dragging them down, isn't it? Definitely. I mean. I could put loads of bait in and wait, but I don't feel them proper fish that you're targeting are going to come that close for me. No. Where I've got to catch lots of little fish quicker and just taking a metre off at a time, just keep a few fish coming like. You'll have to use this rod shortly. <laughs> I'll be out there soon. Yeah. <laughs> So today I've gone for the uh, adrenaline 
uh, Scopex yellow ground bait. So it's a, it's a pellet based mix, but it's got that lovely sream Scopex smell, which we all sort of associate with bream fishing. Uh, it's a nice yellow mix as well, which will sort of discourage smaller fish from going over the top because they feel more threatened by predators, whereas the bream will be happy feeding on it and sighting in on it. So it's perfect for this type of fishing. Uh, it's quite fine, so that, what that allows you to do, to do is if you mix it on the slightly, on the slightly wetter side, you guarantee that that's going to get down in 20 foot, uh, which, you know, in deep water, um, a sort of drier mix has got a, a, a higher chance of uh, falling off the feeder before it hits the deck and then you're not presenting your rig in the right way. So uh, having this uh, nice fine mix, um, slightly damp, uh, damper than what you'd normally use, it guarantees that it gets down to the bottom and provides you with perfect presentation, basically. So I'm fishing a bunch of maggots on the hook, dead maggots. Like I say, we're fishing in deep water, so I'm, uh, I'm loading this feeder and giving it a, 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 a double load, basically. So what that means is you put, you put your hook bait in first, give it a hard squeeze, pop it out, and then I'm just sort of like half filling it again to give that hook bait a proper covering and make sure that that hook bait is still in the ball of ground bait once it gets to the bottom. It's easy as that and just make sure you give it a little extra squeeze just to get it all the way to the bottom. Well, it looks like that top up's done its job. Missed a bite and I've got this one next to Feels like another skimmer, about a pound and a half like the others. It might just pop me back in front of Jordan. If he doesn't come off. Tactical genius, that's what it was. <laughs> Tactical. Watch that pike there, eat it. Ooh, that ain't now skin, Bob. Genius. What a lovely skimmer. So getting down to the terminal tackle, I'm using a, uh, a large uh, 30 gram um, method feeder from MIDI. Uh, it's a nice sort of decent size amount of bait to focus a bream onto. Um, I don't need any heavier than 30 gram to get to the distance that I am, but if I did, uh, we can step up to the 45. Uh, 020 hook length, sounds a bit robust, but I don't think line diameter makes that much difference on a method feeder. And we could be, well, I have already hooked a big carp and you want to give yourself a chance to get, get those fish out. Um, and again, a big hook, size 12, Q-curve, QC1, um, spot on for this type of thing. Um, again, big hooks, I think, I don't think they put the fish off and you've got more of a chance of hooking them um, with, a, with a bigger hook than what you have a small hook. And like I say, you want something big and strong and you're waiting for bites, so you don't want those fish to come off. Uh, so that's what we've got down at the business end. In contrast to Lee, who's gone with a yellow ground bait, so obviously he's catching big bream and they feel comfortable coming out of that. Um, I'm fishing shorter, which means I'm going to be catching a lot more small fish, so I've gone for the F1 Noir. It's a really fine mix, which is nice. You can add particles to it. It's sticky, yet you can mix it on the dry side, make it explosive, so you can put plenty of particles in, make lots of cloud. Otherwise, you can mix it up a little bit more, make it quite heavy and damp and take everything down to the bottom. I feel black, 
the smaller fish tend to feed over a lot better than let's say yellow and uh, it's got a beautiful chocolatey smell it's got enough fish meal in not to put the smaller fish off but not too much so perfect mix really the rig couldn't be any simpler at all got a small sliding boom that I can attach my feeder to just a normal gripper stop and then I've probably got four inches, five inches of twizzle boom and then down to a small swivel just to stop any spin ups. The reason for the twizzle boom as you can see just kicks it off and just prevents any tangles. You don't get many tangles with the rig anyway but that just reassures that it kicks the up length off when you're casting in and out a lot. It just makes it a lot more simple and then down to the up length very simple varied from a meter sometimes longer sometimes shorter just play about with that it's just a simple 014 down to a nice pellet size hook nothing too big i've got a 14s on but you could go bigger come smaller and just vary it up a bit So this is interesting, like I've sat for a, a good hour and a half hour without, a, um, without any bites and uh, I've just put some of the adrenaline um, plasma on, the, uh, the corn flavoured one and I've had two bites in two chucks. Now when I first started using this stuff I, I didn't believe in it at all but quite a few times when I've been feeder fishing and, and put it on it's, uh, it works as like, a, uh, like an impact bait and you can just get a bite from nowhere on it. So, um, yeah, definitely something to keep in your armory. Let me show you how I load it up. So we load the, uh, the feeder up as, you, as normal. Like I said, because we're in deep water today and I want to protect the hook bait, I'm giving it a double, double load. Then all you need to do, little squeeze on the top, and that's just enough just to make a difference. And it's like I said, it's a bit, a bit like an impact bait that you can, uh, you can cast out when uh, things go a bit quiet. And it's just uh, enough attractiveness that can sometimes spur another bite. Let's give it another go. Well, Jordan, thanks for bringing me to this absolutely cracking venue. I thoroughly enjoyed yeah. fishing for these fish today. And like you can you... see the difference between the long and short methods. Can't yeah, you you've got a lot more small fish, small skimmers compared to yours, but nevertheless, still brilliant day's fishing. It would have been lovely to get that big carp in here Definitely, as well. Definitely, it would have looked good. But anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll, uh, we'll meet you on the next video. Thank you. Thank you.